a lost poem retrieved or an attempt to rewrite a poem after 40 years. 820, the Bombay suburban fast fits men and men. The train lurches through its halls, spewing out lonely men onto the last stage. Some reach undreamt destinations as they clasp each other's hands, hoping it will last. Some end up on beaches, lonely or populated, where they feast upon each other's meat. The sea imitates the piston motion of engines. Clatter, clatter goes the love machine as a satisfied audience on shore claps to see the sea. Some illicit poems, some tears, some secret scripts, some public player, prayers, some perfume fragrances, some deodorants, some seek out an unbuilt flat, some locked out churches. Where in the city is a man to find a peg to hang his hat? Some clench the teeth on coming, some bite the pillow in bed, some scream hysterically to see the sky revolve at an open air initiation, their second coming. Some weep with joy, some sadly cry, some douche immediately, some keep the baby. What's a man to do if he can't find a lady? Lady, lady, you shine down on me, send me the dream man to keep me company. I have been good, I have kept the faith, trusted only some, not everyone. Said my rosary daily on the 820 at the school chapel, I write poetry, where Jesuits thumb the rule book Jesuitically. Sometimes I feel the mother's mantle brush past me as I shut my eyes in love's reverie. Across the years, my lover comes to meet me at platform number nine. He smiles and waits patiently as the whole world passes by. He waits and waits and smiles to see me wait as we stay rooted to that spot, age 60 and 63. I was born and brought up in Bombay. <coughs> Mine was the fourth generation of my family in Bombay. My great-grandfather, was an illiterate man who came from Gujarat and he tried many trades. He used to make pagris, Parsi pagris. And once a Sufi came and said, Are tu kagaz mein kya khelta hai? Tu to hira hai hira. So he changed his name to Hiraji and he was pagri wala. He became Javeri and he started selling diamonds to the richest people. One of the families that bought my grandfather's diamonds was Homi Baba's family. And that is how he came to uh, appreciate Western education, uh, women's emancipation through education. He had ad adopted my father's mother as a daughter. And my father, of course, my grandmother, my father's mother had a SSC at that time. It was a very big thing. It was called Cambridge, and the papers went to Cambridge in England to be evaluated. And my mother was from Gujarat, but after her first marriage, she had come to Bombay. And when the British left, the economy was down, and my mother's first husband and her mother to paying guest accommodations with my grandmother, where my mother and father fell in love. As a result of which, my grandmother was very angry and threw both of them out, like God from the kingdom of Eden, the to Adam and Eve. And then I was born. I am the curse of Adam. That famous poem that you like, The Ballad of H.M., that is the long poem where I tell the story because this kind of story is not only personal, but it is also mythic. Mythic in the sense of the British coming, the British being thrown out, the British keeping the economy and then going away and keep making it go down. And then this repetitive history where people are quarreling because they want to separate and make new identities. The daughter-in-law no longer wants to stay with the mother-in-law, right? And Bombay, which is built by the Gujaratis and the Marathis, they don't want to stay together. In 56, when I was in Fort Standard, we used to go to school. 
in my father's car and we had to duck the stones. They were throwing stones at each other. You know, we were afraid that the glass of the cars would shatter and so on. So these kinds of histories, the Portuguese leaving Goa was one history from my childhood, 60s. So 60s was an important time and I had my first sexual experience at 50, in 1958. I was in the sixth standard, so I must have been 11 or 12 years old. And you know, I don't understand child molestation. I don't understand the concept, because I was the one who touched the man. I was the child molester who was molesting the adult. <laughs> so I was the child who was a molester. I was the child molester. But of course, you can't make a 12-year-old child responsible, you know. The man I touched must have been 40. Actually, I was touching people my father's age. I wanted that touch from my father. My father was very afraid of his own homo homosexual uh, 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 psyche because he was brought up by his mother and he had an elder sister. His father had died when he was one year old in the influenza epidemic of 19, the world epidemic of 1917. And you know, we suffer because of our parents not knowing themselves, because in that time they didn't analyze themselves. They didn't have that PhDs that we have, and read Freud and all that. You know, they, they thought this is simple, you know, you marry, you have a child, you go to work, you feed them. If you can't feed them, you're a bad parent. If you can feed them, you're a good parent. You see, everything was like material welfare. And they thought that the children were perverted if something went wrong. It's not that the parent had made the child go wrong, the child was perverted. I mean, after all, I was touching adults in the train, so I was perverted in that sense. But why was I doing it? I was doing it because I was disturbed, because I was not getting love. And then these people don't want to give you love, they want to sexually exploit you. I never thought anything about, it. you know, sodomy. I mean, how would I know? I mean, I was aghast. I didn't know that such things happen, that people do such things to people. I'd seen dogs doing it, but I didn't think human beings did it, you know. But then, you know, you become masochistic. And it's a, it is a painful act, no, for a child to be penetrated by an adult. And I would say, well, I deserve it. I'm evil. And all this pain is my punishment. But I was only wanting love, you know. Because I never had an orgasm, I didn't have an erection until I was 18. So from the age of 12 to the age of 18, I was having sex every week when different men were sodomizing me. But I never had an erection, I never had, because they didn't think. They thought that I was a chakka, and chakkas don't have erections, they don't have orgasm. Actually in India there is no gay they will take a hole, any hole that is available. That means that they are bisexual or they are pansexual. They will do it with eunuchs. Some men prefer eunuchs because they are very strong and can withstand that kind of assault, which is just a sexual assault. Now, love has nothing to do with it, relationships. It's a commercial transaction, no? Between the eunuch and the client of the eunuch. They can do it with... Uh, you know, there is a lot of perversion these days, young children being raped, 13-year-old, raping 6-year-old. It's a sickness, it's become a sickness now, you know. No, but as a gay writer... See, also... I think men are bisexual, to keep it simple. All human beings are bisexual. You know, some people become homosexual because that is opportunistic to do so. Some people remain heterosexual because of... Uh, availability of women to them, either they can buy them. You know, you know, in my father's day, boys who were heterosexual like my father had to go to prostitutes. My father's grandfather used to give my father money as kindness and as adolescence to go to prostitutes. Where were the girls? Where were the girls at JNU giving freely? There were no such girls. You know, this is an American invention to suppress homosexuality. Because there is a phase where men will go through homosexuality in the growing up stage. I say this in Yarana, you know, because, you know, I said it in that poem also that every love is a preparation for a great love to come. 
So for a heterosexual, it would be a marriage love, right? And the boys, when they go through their uh, experiences with other boys at school or with the girls at college, that that is not real love, you know? They're learning love, isn't it? They're learning sexuality. It's like we're like animals, no? We have to experiment. And this morality and this kind of... Uh, even I find this whole psychological thing about gay or queer, this labeling is actually very oppressive. You know, because sexuality is very fluid. And human beings, if they are allowed fluidity, then they wouldn't become afraid. They wouldn't think that they are perverted. Or they, they wouldn't think that they are being assaulted. I'm not saying that every man wants to sleep with a man. I'm not saying that, you know. But there are men who would like to sleep with men without feeling guilty. Okay? And I think that the gay should also allow men to remain straight, you know. We are very predatory. <laughs> we are also, we also say such things like, all men are bisexual. That means, abhi bisexual men are kalshadi karna. So that is not very kind to other people. You know, we say that we are being uh, put upon, but we also in our group frenzy, we are also quite dictatorial, you know. We are no saints. See, fascism can be homosexual as well as heterosexual. And in fact, the great fascists were homosexual. You know about the scandal of Hitler, no? Hitler's officers were found having sex with each other. And it was going to come out in the paper. So Hitler said, Nazism bans homosexuality from today. And everybody who was gay was rounded up, including those poor men who were having sex because they were challenging Hitler's position. There were army men who could have shot Hitler down and he killed them for homosexuality. This is all documented. It is especially documented by the Jewish uh, analysts, historians, because the next step was to kill the Jews. You see, you need to have a scapegoat to become powerful. You need to have somebody to subordinate to be superior. And these can be invented very easily. You can invent anything. Tomorrow I will say everybody with a banana-like nose must die. If I have the power, then I will kill them. You know, I don't need a reason. I can say anything I want if I have the power. This Article 377 is very important. 377 was introduced by Macaulay in the Indian Penal Code and Macaulay also introduced English education. If you ask a common man about homosexuality, they said, no, 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 India mein aisa nahi hota, hota sab London mein hota hai. Because that English man gave the word homosexual to us. We don't have a word for homosexuality in our, in our languages. You see, so, and of course the gay liberation had come through the Stonewall Revolution and the gay liberation in England. And we Indian homosexuals were confronted with this claim that our sexuality is Western, you know? And what I had to do in Yarana was to find literary sources for our sexuality, going back to the Vedic age. So I have ancient India, I have uh, medieval India, I have modern India and English and the vernacular languages. But what happened was that Hindutva was also gaining ground at that time. And Kushwan Singh of Penguin told my student Kartika, who had commissioned the book, that let not Hoshan get into trouble. And besides, Hoshan has studied modern literature. Hoshan is not very strong on uh, medieval India and uh, uh, ancient India. So let's lay it aside and let's just do the modern stories, okay? And I had to write an introduction. Uh, what was left over, I put as Indian homosexuality in a book with Allied, which I published myself with Allied. And uh, Yarana became very famous because it was picked up by the gay academics at London. My student, uh, had put all my uh, early poems on the net and these gay professors had a discussion group called the Knitting Circle. And they were obviously Kotis who were kind of making fun of themselves that they are these old aunties who knit and talk high literature. 
So the knitting circle was then picked up by people in the liberal establishment like the Guardian and uh, the Granta, Granta, which has a connection with India through its editors. And I became, I became world famous. IPC 377 created a homosexual because such a name didn't exist in India. So by naming this creature, they had to create a legal entity called a homosexual, which then can be captured and put into jail. You understand? To put people into jail, you need categories. So they had to create that category. Like the Forest Act created the Adivasi. There was no Adivasi. You know, there were Bheels, there were Banjaras, there were, you know? But this Adivasi was created by the Forest Act. There was no Dalit. Dalit was created by the uh, uh, Ambedkar Acts, you see. So these acts which are meant to suppress these prejudices against people of so-called perversions by the people, enforce the prejudice and enforce the perversion by naming it and giving it importance and creating phobias around it. You understand what I'm saying? Now don't you think that these acts should also go away right now? Well, the Dalit Act is supposed to help the Dalits, so you can't say cancel the Dalit Act. The Adivasi Act is being manipulated to extract uh, minerals by companies like Vedanta, you know? So that, that Modi government is uh, actually diluting the acts, you know? All the environmental... Uh, Clearances now are being given very easily because the whole thing is diluted. About homosexuality, the prejudice that La Bengali judge on the last day of his long career uh, to judge bench made Ill uh, homosexuality illegal again when it was made legal by the Delhi High Court judgment, right of 2009. And they struck it down two years later. Now, my feeling is that, as I told you, Hitler had a great uh, following of gay men. My feeling is, and this is an intuition, I'm not saying anything about anybody, but this is an intuition that right wing, which is conservative, encourages same-sex bonding. Let's not say sex, love, bonding. The army, the soldiers march together. They live together and they die together. They will take a bullet for their friend and die for their friend. Like Sashikala does for Dharmendra and Fuller Patra. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the, this kind of bonding it could be sexual. There are human beings who are living without women for on Siachen Glacier for six months. What do you expect them to do? Right? You know? So there is the bonding in same-sex clubs the Boy Scout, the Army, the Navy, uh, Rashtriya Seva, Ksang. You understand? These are homoerotic societies. And when the, those parties form a government, this government understands that this is where our strength is. Now they could be a little more liberal and they could be a little kinder and they will say we will repeal 377 because it's all around us. Why should we pretend that it isn't? And it's not harming anybody, right? It's not creating illegitimate babies. It's not breaking up families with divorce, right? Uh, AIDS in India is spread by prostitutes and truck drivers on these roads from Hyderabad to Sholapur and to Bombay. That is the, and from uh, Madras to Delhi with Sardarji trucks drivers, you know, these are the roots of transmission of, heterosexual transmission of AIDS. So, it is a relatively innocent preoccupation of young men or not so young men like me. And why put them in jail? Right? And as I am fond of saying, I would be a fascist like my father if I weren't a homosexual. Because I'm a Parsi and we Parsis are fascist and conservative because all we are interested in is keeping our money to ourselves. 
you have to understand and if i wasn't gay i wouldn't have been adopted by the liberal establishment i would have had the need to have a phd in psychology and literature and sociology to understand myself and understand the world which what is it in me that makes the world hate me so much the world hates itself because it's in the world if you hate the homosexual in me it's because you can't accept the homosexual in you right but to learn that that liberal doctrine of tolerance you know you have to be a subject to intolerance first isn't it it's very easy to say i'm tolerant or i'm tolerant if you're the queen of england and you suffer nothing no she taught me how to speak about love you know we need a vocabulary for love reality is uh, linguistic you know my father said i love you but he never said i love you how do i know he was always beating me with love in his heart i mean it, that may be true because we wanted to discipline our children and so forth but that's not that's not love as far as the child is concerned anas neen gave me a vocabulary of love okay and the sufis gave me a vocabulary of love you see now their love is for god anas anas neen's love was for heterosexual men you know uh, she disapproved of homosexuality she has have experimented with lesbianism you see so once i had the vocabulary then i could write yarana once yarana was written and kartika also had same sex uh, looking in the mirror looking in the mirror for flame lesbian experience come out as a mirror anthology to yarana so there was the men and there was the women so they started screaming why doesn't hoshank talk of lesbians or about the lesbians and their own book why don't you just read these feminists they love to shout leftist feminists they love shouting and then later on what really happened was the hijra started telling the story lakshmi revthi you know they started the, the people who had no voice the people who had no language the people who had no vocabulary the people who were given no attention so that is a very big thing that this opening of yarana did and the lesbians have told me i am a misogynist i like women socially but i fear women sexually so you can say that oh you have many girlfriends but if you don't sleep with them that means you're deeply suspicious of women you are deep down a woman hater and if you are a woman hater and you can give courage to lesbian women to write that is a big thing